demo. I spent most of my 20s partying. Here's what I learned. Jack Denmo launched his online career filming unsanctioned street parties, but his latest party video includes two tickets mailed to him last week by London bylaw enforcement. I am paying it. <laughs> Popular YouTuber Jack Denmo released an over hour long video. Most are peacefully partying, a few get dangerously rowdy. He believes City Hall's efforts to crack down on the party have crossed the line. It changes my opinion on the country. I don't want to live in a place where I'm not allowed to walk down the road or drink a beer on my front lawn. That just sounds crazy. We are very concerned about the posting of the dangerous events on YouTube. The weather is shit, my cock is purple, the cops are gay, but we're still out here having a fucking good time. Let's fucking go! Yeah! Is partying good? Is it bad? When should you do it? When should you stop? What is it like being the life of the party? And what is it like having 10,000 people chant your name and lift you up as you crowd surf above them? Well, fortunately for you guys, I've done all of this and I'm gonna tell you about it in this video. I have done more partying than just about everybody else on YouTube. And I'm not saying that to like brag or flex. The reason I did so much partying is because that was my job. My job was literally to go and film at parties. And I did it for years. Every weekend I'd be going to multiple different parties, whether they're inside, outside, nightclub, private house party. Sometimes I'd even go to these crazy street parties with like tens of thousands of people, festivals, concerts, special events. I've done some crazy, epic shit and i'm really grateful that i got to do it because most people will never get to experience that kind of lifestyle and if you guys want to watch those videos there's hundreds of them on youtube you can just check out the link in the description but again i'm not saying this to brag or flex i'm saying this because based on all of the things that i've experienced i learned so much so that you don't have to you should definitely still go out and party and experience it but a lot of people they have massive fomo thinking they've missed out on something and they can never do it again that's not true. But the other reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people demonize partying and drinking and they say it's a waste of time and you should be doing this and that. And yeah, I agree with you. However, if you're a beast, you can do both. So that's what I did. I worked my ass off in my 20s while partying can a lot. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, tell me the most interesting fact about you. I worked a lot of terrible jobs before making my own job. Really? And a lot of the most successful guys I know that are making a lot of money, they have a lot of friends, they bang a lot of chicks. They partied a fuck ton in their 20s and they still party, but they were responsible about it. And if you watch until the end of the video, I'm gonna teach you guys how you can party in your 20s while also becoming super successful and not becoming a loser like most people think you become when you party. Those guys would end up being losers anyways, regardless of if they partied, guys. Maybe it sped it up a little bit, but we're gonna break that down. Fuck, man. Yo. I just sent the pictures. Oh, okay. Let me take a look There's right now. There's a green one and then a dark blue one. Okay, let me see here. Ooh. I know you wear large. Fuck it, let's do blue. You don't like the green one? Yeah, I think the blue one's more fire. Done, I'll get the blue one. Bet, you're do the you best. Do you get the green one anyways? No. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll get the blue one. All right, okay. sweet. Thank you. Wow, we gotta get back to this video, guys, okay? Because boys are always first. Trend number one is self-improvement channels where they just shit on people that party and drink alcohol and they almost act like obnoxious snobs towards people that party. Like, oh, yeah, you, you drank every weekend. Uh. And the truth is they probably just didn't get invited to parties and they weren't as epic. They weren't treated as well at those parties. So they never really learned like how awesome it can be. Trend number two is people who have extreme FOMO and they think that partying is the coolest thing ever, okay? And these are the guys that like, they party in their backyards or there's like one local bar in their hometown and they go there with some friends but they never really get to like go out and hit some crazy parties they never really get to be treated well or given special treatment so they feel like they're missing out big time and they watch a video from their friends Instagram story or whatever and they're like oh my god like I should have went there why did I not do anything this weekend this guy's always posting crazy stories of him at parties and I'm also here to say that that doesn't make that person super cool just because they do that either in fact a lot of the reason they're posting it is just to show people how cool they are when in fact they aren't you kind of see what I'm getting at but anyways guys I've spent so much time partying and making content around it and I'm gonna break it down for you the number one thing I learned was when you're young you feel invincible this is both good and bad 
the good part of it is that you probably can do a lot more stuff than you would when you're older. I know guys that climb street signs, backflip off a roof, jump through pong tables. They drink way too much alcohol and they're fine. And they're like a legend, like, oh my God, savage. He drank that much, right? And these are all things that people think are cool when you're in your early 20s. They're like, wow, it's the coolest thing ever. And because of that, they risk everything because at the time, all they care about is like having fun and status. I've done so much stupid stuff, like drink till you puke, get in the fights, run away from the cops. Like there's a lot of dumb stuff that people do, but as they get older, they realize, whoa, 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 this isn't the coolest thing after all. When you're young, you don't even think about that stuff. Second thing, girls will bang you for alcohol, drugs, or entry into the party. Yes, that seems like common sense, but guys, I have seen this so many times. The best example I can find is guys that have drugs. And I don't say that to encourage guys to become a or anything. I condemn drugs. That's why I censored it. But a lot of girls are into it. And if you have that, then they'll hang out with you and they're much more likely to bang. Same thing with alcohol. Same thing with entry into a party. Because if you are working at the venue where the party is held, you have leverage of who gets to go into the party, who doesn't. If you're in a frat or you have a bunch of friends that are girls or you are just known as a social guy and you're the one throwing parties, it's very exclusive, it's invite only. And girls will usually be more likely to treat you better or whatever in order to get access to those parties. And because of that, you get access to hanging out with them, which makes you much more likely to flirt with them and blah, 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 you get more pussy. That's the long story short. Number three, if you can drink a lot, you are a legend. People treat you with the utmost respect because nobody likes a guy that can't handle his booze. If you can't handle your booze, it's basically like you're a noob, you're a Melvin, people don't take you seriously. So if you're gonna go to a party and drink, don't be that guy that gets super drunk off of two drinks because people are gonna think you're an idiot. And on the contrary, the more you can drink or the more you can handle your alcohol rather, the more of a legend you are because it shows that you have some kind of superhuman genetics or you do this all the time, which implies experience, which is a good thing. The next thing I learned from partying is that <laughs> most people have no hobbies. In fact, most people's main hobby nowadays is social media. Their entire life isn't actually living, but it's about making others think that they are living way better and cooler lives than they actually are. Partying goes hand in hand with that because again, people are stupid. They see somebody posting on their story about all the partying they're doing. They think, oh, it's the coolest person ever. They're having so much fun. And yes, it is fun, but I'm telling you guys, the mo most people that party, they don't post it. They don't show everybody what they're doing. They wanna keep it low key because first of all, they don't feel the need to be validated by all the partying they're doing. But second, they don't want people to know how much partying they're doing because oftentimes they're like professionals or let's say they have a girlfriend and they're out partying with a bunch of other girls. Like point I'm making is most people are up to date on the news, they're up to date on maybe sports or memes, but besides that, they have no real hobbies. So every weekend they have nothing to do besides party. They go out, drink with their friends. It was a movie, last night was a movie, you know, that kind of thing. But in reality, they're not actually doing anything because they don't really have hobbies and they don't really have the incentive to like start a business or learn a new skill or anything because as long as you're included, it doesn't matter if you're poor. That's kind of the mindset in your 20s. Like instead of waking up early and getting a second job or, and like reading a book or like starting a business, getting a course, something like that, that's cool. But you have to do all that by yourself because all your friends are out partying. So people would rather be poor and included than rich and isolated. That's a mind fuck right there. Think about that. Next, status is super important. Who you know, who you bring. So when you have social media clout or internet fame, like I do, it's way easier to get invited to this kind of thing. You get treated really well when you're in there. Everybody worships you. You get in there for free in the first place. You get like a nice booth or they set you up with the people that paid for like the best seats, the best booth. And you get to hang out with the people that paid to be there despite not paying to be there just because of your status or your clout. But when you don't have fame or clout, you get treated like a customer. So you get treated like shit basically, because unless you pay or have clout, then you aren't actually valuable to the people in the club or the people at the party for that matter. Unless it's like, you know, a house party, nobody's like paying attention to that, but I'm talking about most of the parties you guys will go to. So yes, status is super important. There's different ways to have status on a smaller scale. Like if you organize the party, or if it's you celebrating something, or if you brought something to the party, or if you know everybody at the party, 
or you do something cool at the party. Like there's ways around it. The point I'm making is status is super important, especially at parties. Next, partying is necessary for forming bonds. Partying is very primal. It's like fighting. It's literally in our DNA because people that have nothing in common with each other, they do different jobs, they have different political beliefs, they are interested in different things, they live in different places. They all have one thing in common. They like to party. They like to drink, dance, listen to music, get treated good, meet new people. Everybody's partying together and they don't know why they're partying. They just are because they have like energy in their bodies and they want to let it out. It's the same thing as like going to a concert by a band. You'll see a bunch of people from different backgrounds, different jobs, different careers, different whatever, and they're all at the same club because they all like the same thing. And there's something bonding about that. But the reason partying has such a bond too is because you literally do it together with others and there's also alcohol involved, which naturally lowers inhibition, lowers anxiety, and makes people way more likely to party with strangers that they didn't know. So it's very necessary. And the reason I say that is because there's so many people I've barely known that I've partied with, and for the rest of our lives, we have that memory and we cherish that moment. It's something that we always remember, like, oh, dude, remember that time at that party, you know? So it's definitely something that's essential for forming bonds long-term. Next. Partying is much more than drinking. It's the planning, it's the group chats, it's getting the supplies, the pre-drink, missioning to the, the venue. Oh my God, we are falling apart in the car on the ride there. Oh, buddy lost his ID, we have to go get it. Oh, we got in anyways, oh, legendary, you know. There's so many different little things going on, like mini missions. And then you get to the party, there's the party itself, then there's the after party. You're going home, everybody's mangled, you don't know who goes where, you have to find your one buddy that's missing, your buddy gets in a fight, whatever. You walk to the convenience store at 3 a.m., you order pizza, you lay there in your clothes, you're all dirty and drunk and buddy's puking. It's so much more than the actual party, but it's all the events around it, the plot twists, the side missions, the unexpected things, and then recounting it all the next day. That's actually the best parts of the party oftentimes, better than the party. Next, a lot of people who partied every weekend are working bum jobs now. You guys thought this whole video was just gonna be me talking about how great partying is? No, 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 no. That's what got your attention. But the truth is, a lot of my friends that partied on weekends, they're not doing anything now. I wouldn't say they're losers, but they never, like each of those weekends that they could have spent working hard on a side hustle, learning a skill, trying different things, getting good at something, they just partied, right? Because what happens is, when people party, they see it as an excuse to take the next day off, right? All the times I would party, I'd be up super early, first thing in the morning, and I'd be back to work. I'd be hungover sometimes, but I'd just drink water, or I'd eat a bunch of food before I went to sleep. Hell, I'd run on fucking three hours of energy, but I was very strategic about it because I still love working and I like doing stuff, but most people, they're escaping from their life when they go to parties. So all they do is they do that every weekend and they think, okay, well, you know, Monday to Friday is for figuring stuff out, but they're working, so they don't obviously figure anything out. Uh, weekends are for partying, and weekends are supposed to be taken off. So, yeah, a lot of friends of mine, you know, they're, uh, they're bums now, which is sad. And this also includes, you know, university kids with the fancy degree, because a lot of kids went to university and, you know, they got a specific degree and they partied a shitload, but same thing. Once again, instead of taking the time to decide what they actually wanted to do with life long-term, they got a degree to get a nine to five job. There's an analogy, I forget what it is, but it's like once you've invested a certain amount of time and energy into something, you feel the need to keep it going, right? Even if you don't like it. So for example, all these university kids that each weekend they went out and partied, they got their degree, but now they're working like a nine to five corporate job. They hate it, but they don't know anything else to do on the weekends. They're like, well, I'm already made it this far, so let me just keep this going. I don't wanna mess up a good thing. So they still don't do anything on weekends. They may as well be partying. On the contrary, a lot of friends of mine who didn't party experience massive FOMO. They always look back and they're actually depressed because they're like, oh, like I never got to have that crazy lifestyle. I never got to go out and bang a lot of chicks or I never got to like meet a girl I actually like. I never got to get hammered and do all these cool things, travel, like, a lot of it isn't even partying, but it all gets mixed in there. But the point I'm making is like, uh, a lot of these people, they try to make up for this lost time later on, especially I've noticed guys, women. Women will miss out on partying for whatever reason, because they're in like a relationship or they're in like a really hard program at school or for whatever reason. And then they'll be like 25, 26, 27. They'll get out of that relationship. 
they'll have an epiphany where they don't like their job, they'll be single or something inspires them to start partying again and they go hard, they go out there. I know a lot of guys that their girlfriend broke up with them because she never really got to date around. She never got to sleep with other guys. So she would cheat on the guy because she felt like she was missing out on that. And they had FOMO. That's basically what it came down to. And also a lot of these people that secretly have massive FOMO, like I said before, a lot of these self-improvement channels, they have like this high horse that they sit on where they say, oh, like I hate clubs, drinking is poison, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But meanwhile, they're usually always losers. It's always losers that talk about the thing that they don't want to be because they couldn't be that thing. Meanwhile, there was guys like me out at these clubs banging their girlfriends. You know, the, you know, back then, Becky, she wasn't a good girl, man. <laughs> Everybody at the club was banging her. But now, like, you're in your nine to five job and you're dating this girl. You're about to have a kid with this girl. And you think, oh, clubbing's bad. Only idiots club. I'm so glad I didn't do it. Meanwhile, she's like, yeah, well, I did. I fucked a lot of dudes. Next, a lot of the coolest people I know partied a lot. And I don't just mean hometown drinking buddies, I mean like worldwide, because again, a lot of the good friends I've made, I made through partying. And again, partying doesn't mean drinking, but it means going out. It means networking with people, talking with people. That's usually where you find a lot of high value guys because high value guys, they don't necessarily know where to go to meet other high value guys. So they just go to clubs and they drink and they party and they meet with other people. So there's this whole thing that like, Sure, there's a lot of guys that have never drank their whole life, never partied, you know, and they're multi-millionaires, but honestly, guys, you can do both. You just don't have to uh, be such a fucking tight ass about it. You know what I mean? You don't have to just not party ever. And what's funny is all these guys that I know that are successful, they partied, but that was to blow off all the steam from all the hard work they're doing. And it doesn't mean hard work for somebody else, but it's like hard work on their business, right? They were just building empires and they had all kinds of stress and partying was like kind of necessary for them to live a little bit i suppose but also the things i mentioned before okay next i've lost a lot of close friends partying and what i mean is like a lot of my friends they've od'd because they've drank or consumed too much mostly drugs. um i know one guy a friend of mine in college he got so drunk that he tried crossing the river in the winter time. So there was a river next to our old college and there was like a bar everybody went to. This guy would walk across the river because it was frozen and it would save him like 15 minutes to go around all the way to the bridge and cross that way. So he would just cross this river. And one day he crossed the river when he was hammered drunk, he fell through the ice and he drowned because he was too drunk to uh, save himself when he was drowning. Awful way to die, guys. People, they just push the limit too far. They would OD on some other stuff because partying was their whole identity and they would progressively level up, need more and more alcohol, and then more and more stuff besides alcohol and their tolerance would go up and they're hanging out with these other people. Then the next thing you know, they OD, it's really sad. So, um, you know, a lot of people never figure out until later in life that their identity is not just partying. If you see somebody and their whole identity is partying, it's, it's very dangerous, slippery slope, it's not gonna last. Next, the person who hosts the party has all the power. They get the most party favors, AKA free stuff. They have control, everybody respects them, treats them better because they're the one hosting the party. Now, on the contrary, a lot of guys that host parties are actually creepy little dorks and weirdos. And their whole thing is like, well, if I have a party, people will like me. So people show up, hot girls show up, and bro, the only reason you're talking to that girl is because you have a nice mansion, you have the party, and everybody's coming and drinking your booze, dude. So yeah, you'll get pussy that way, I guess, but it's not a real good way to get pussy. Another thing too is there's a lot of guys that do this and they take advantage of drunk girls, which is always a scum move. Don't ever be that guy. It's just a fucking weirdo move. Next, believe it or not guys, I don't actually like clubs. I'm not a club guy. And I know that sounds crazy based on all the things I told you below, but I don't like the music. I don't like the atmosphere. And to be fair, I don't really like the atmosphere of bars either because I don't really watch sports. The only reason I would go to bars and clubs was to bang chicks or film videos. And that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously like if it's a friend's birthday or celebration or something, I'll go out because you know, that's what it's about. It's not about the club itself. But in all honesty guys, like clubs just aren't my thing. And once I started making YouTube videos, all of a sudden it was fun to go to clubs because I got to talk to funny people. I got to film them and there's like all these little mini missions doing that. And then I got to go home, I got to edit it. And it was like art. I'm like making something out of, uh, of, out of a party. 
And all of a sudden I turned that into content. So then it became fun because I had something to do there and I wasn't so bored. It was a real grind still, but it was fun. But I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for YouTube. <laughs> Okay, last but not least, I love partying. I don't do it much anymore because I'm a workaholic and I love working more than I love partying. But at the end of the day, guys, partying is great. I actually went through a period of time where I didn't party for months. And when I did go to parties, I wasn't even there. I felt like I wasn't on the same wave as everybody else. I felt disconnected because I was just thinking about work. I just couldn't relax and uh, I just go into that mode sometimes. I've always looked as, at partying as work and as content, whereas most people, they look at it as like, hey, I'm just gonna forget about my life for a day. And uh, for me, I couldn't forget about my life for a day when I go to parties, so it took me a while. But recently, a friend of mine, uh, two of them, they had a birthday, same weekend. They had like 40 people over, house party, guys and girls, people I hadn't seen in a while. Amazing time, it was awesome. So the reason I'm saying all of this is because a lot of my friends that don't party anymore, they'd like to, but they can't afford to because they weren't responsible about it, right? In their early 20s, they slacked, they partied, but they didn't work. Or they partied, but they slept in, wasted the whole day. Whereas the guys I know that were successful, it had nothing to do with whether they partied or didn't party. They were probably always gonna be successful. And in fact, it encouraged them to balance both because when you have limited time to do something, you get it done quicker and more efficiently. And that's what I think about all my friends that were successful from partying. Last thing I gotta tell you, partying was super important to me and my party videos because it allowed me to connect with all my fans on such a deeper level. What I mean by that is like, my fans were actually part of the content. When I would go out to film, people would recognize me, they supported me, they liked the videos, they'd wanna be in the videos. And even the guys that didn't wanna be in the videos, they wanted to watch. So it was always like this fun little spectacle or gathering and I got to connect with fans that watched the videos even when I wasn't recording because I was there and they knew I'd be there. So we got to meet up, shake hands, talk, have a beer or two and just, it was really awesome because I made a lot of friends doing that. Unlike most other YouTubers, they don't actually ever get to meet their subscribers. And when they do, it's like a forced meetup or it's at like a specific time. Like I was out there in the field with the people in my videos. I was there in person and the whole premise of the videos was to interact with humans and have fun and document it. So because of that, me and my fans have a way better bond. And guys, if you've met me in real life before, whether it was at a party or it was on the street, whatever, I wanna hear your story about meeting me below. Drop it in the comments below, because I guarantee I have way better fans and uh, I've been way cooler to my fans than all the other YouTubers who treat their fans like shit because they separate their fans from their work. I never did. I always lumped them together because at the end of the day, I'm making the videos with the people that watch the videos, which is the best thing ever. So it gave me a very intimate following. In the future, I don't know how much more partying I'm gonna do. I mean, the Hoko videos, I would do these massive, like 10, 20, 30,000 people meetups in the middle of the street. But the cities and the universities and bylaw, they started coming after me, ticketing me thousands of dollars, trying to intimidate me by sending police to my house, trying to like press charges on me for shit that I didn't even do. Like it just got out of control and it kind of, prevented me from meeting up with a lot of my fans over the last year or so because if I even touch foot on the street they're gonna fucking SWAT team me charge me like twenty thousand dollar fines like maybe I'll do some parties and meetups in the future do it at a bar club or something obviously it doesn't have to be a crazy over-the-top hoko uh, style meetup but uh idiot, idiot. what are you doing here, I don't want to bring no it's okay what do we got here oh look at this yeah, it look, it's nice. It's really nice. Oh, that looks really good. What do you think? It actually fits you perfectly just like that. Thank you. Yeah, it's good quality too. Yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, for those of you that now your opinion on partying and drinking has changed, I'm curious what you think. If there's anything I missed that you guys would want to drop in the comments below, feel free to. And after you guys leave a comment, I want you to go and watch this video next. It's up on the screen. Just click that right there, and I'll see you next time. Peace.